today, which is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. So if you want to either get your Bible out or read it off the screen, we'll be doing that. First Peter chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its very various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we rejoice in the word that you have given to us today. We recognize that you are God and that you have given us this word to bless us in our lives and to be a blessing to others. And we pray that today we would receive this word and apply it to our lives through your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well... Does anybody know what the first line of this passage was? Did you catch that? It's not still up the screen. You're going to have to remember. What did it say? The end, is, the end of all things is near. And uh, so when uh, I hear that, I think of uh, these guys that uh, have the sign. You have that picture there? The, you see them sometimes on street corners. And they're holding a sign that says, the end is near. And it's com been common enough that people have actually kind of made jokes about it. We're going to kind of do some of those cartoons as we go along. But uh, there are people that stand out on the, the signs. And they probably get it from this particular passage of Scripture that says, the end is near. But interestingly enough, uh, as we read this Scripture today that they got this from, it does not say that because the end is near, you should go paint a sign and stand on a street corner. Did you notice that in reading this passage? There wasn't any verse that says, paint a sign and go stand on a street corner. Or even go around and tell everybody uh, the end is near and do it that way. This is, instead, it, it gave us some instructions right after that that told us what to do. And we're going to be looking at those in a minute. But before we get there, the, the question that some people have is, is it really near? Is the end really that close? And there are uh, some people that, that uh, don't realize that the end of the world is coming. Interestingly enough, Everybody agrees, everybody in science, everybody in religion, everybody agrees that the end is coming. It's just a question of when. Now, there are, we've been told by science that the sun will burn out. And there's some discrepancy on how many years it's going to take for that to happen. But we know from what happens to other stars that they do eventually burn out. They become uh, red giants, I think, and then white, you know, red dwarfs, white dwarfs. I don't know what all the names are, but there's a process that suns go through or stars go through, and uh, eventually they burn out, and th at that point, life on Earth will end. And, and so the number that I saw was 5 billion years. So we know that within 5 billion years, or somewhere around there, the sun will burn out and all life on Earth will end. And then I was studying a little bit more about it. It says, well, actually, it's not going to take 5 billion years because as it burns out, it will increase in intensity. And really, within a billion years, it will be too hot to live here on the, on the Earth. And eventually, the sun will encompass the Earth's, the whole orbit 
of the earth. And so we'll get swallowed up by the sun anyway, probably within a couple of billion years. But within a billion years, we won't be able to live here anyway. So you only have a billion years at the most on the outside. But, now of course we've been hearing all about climate change and global warming. And so we've been hearing from science again, talking to us about how this is going to affect the earth and at the rate we're going, the temperatures are going to continue to increase. And so that within a certain amount of time, uh, we won't be able to live on the earth but just because of our own climate change problems that we've created here. And the numbers, that, uh, obviously, they vary a lot, but certainly within a few hundred years, uh, this world is not going to be inhabitable anymore. In fact, uh, one of the greatest scientists of our era is a man named Stephen Hawking. And Stephen Hawking is, has done a lot of study on this, and he's come to the conclusion that our Earth will not be inhabitable within the next 100 years. And so he says, we, within 100 years, we won't be able to live on this planet anymore. And his suggestion is, now he's, he's not a Christian, he's an atheist. So he doesn't look at God as the solution, but he says what, what it appears to him that the best solution that we have is to pack up and go to Mars. So that's what he suggests, is that we be working right now on how to transport as many people as possible over to Mars and, and make that our new uh, place of residence. Of course, that 100 years is assuming that nothing else cataclysmic happens before then. That's just natural progression of things. But it could be something could happen even sooner. We could get hit by an asteroid. Uh, they suggest that the dinosaurs were all destroyed by a giant asteroid that hit the planet. So we could all be wiped out if an asteroid hits us. Uh, we could be wiped out by a massive volcanic uh, eruption. They say that Yellowstone National Park is a, what do they call it, a mega volcano or a super volcano, whatever the word is. It is possible of wiping out certainly all the life in the United States, but, but quite possibly the whole world. If it were to blow up uh, with a tremendous explosion, it would send enough stuff into the sky that it would wipe out life on Earth because the sun wouldn't be able to get through. Anyway, that could happen at any moment. An asteroid could happen at any moment. We've been, uh, most of us have been following the uh, North Korea situation. Kim Jong, whatever, which one we are on right now. Um, he is a crazy person. Uh, which, you know, there's crazy people in the world, but this one happens to have nuclear weapons. And so because he has nuclear weapons, we know he has nuclear weapons, uh, we, although he's crazy, we take him seriously and, and we're really afraid of this guy. And we do everything we can to appease him. We send him money for food and stuff like that, which he gives to his military and whatever. But uh, we've been appeasing him for many years because we're afraid of him and, and the nuclear weapons that he has. And... Now, uh, I guess in the last week or two, he has developed a missile that is capable, an uh, intercontinental missile that is capable of reaching the United States now. So he can send one of those nuclear bombs over to us and be able to hit us with some kind of nuclear weapon. And so that's got people, there's a lot of people talking about all of this. Uh, because now it's, it's a more real possibility that we could be hit by a nuclear weapon by somebody that's crazy. Of course, we have two countries that are capable of blowing up the entire world by themselves. Maybe three, uh, if you count China too. But certainly the United States and Russia are completely capable of blowing up the planet and, and ending life on Earth, either one of them. If they at any moment were to push a button uh, that would be the end of life if they just sent everything that they had up into the air. And so, although we're worried about North Korea, 
It seems to me like we should be more worried about Putin or Trump because they are the ones that have at their capability the ending of life on earth right at any minute. Uh, I was reading it takes, it, they ex think it takes 33 minutes for a missile to get from Russia over to here. And so we have 33 minutes once they push the button before we're wiped out. And if they do it from a submarine, it's even faster because they might be off the coast. They could get here in 10 or 15 minutes from there. So it seems to me like we should be a little bit more concerned about Putin and Trump and making sure that they're happy. Instead of this Kim Jong whatever and, and trying to make him happy, we should be making them happy. So what are we doing with Putin and, and Trump? What is, our, what is our world doing to them? <laughs> Every day they're getting attacked. And, and so, I, you know, I, it's funny to me that we're worried about North Korea, but the two people that have the most ability to destroy us, we're attacking them daily and telling them, you know, how awful they are. So, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, uh, the point is, is that it could happen very quickly and it's within our own capability. We don't even have to wait for an asteroid or, or anything else. We can do this ourselves in, in just a matter of minutes and the world. The Bible does say that there will be an end to this planet. And it even tells us how it's going to happen. Uh, God, des God destroyed the life on earth with a flood. At one point, he said, the next time I'm not going to do it by flood, I'm going to do it by fire. And so there's going to be a huge cataclysmic fire that destroys the world and certainly a nuclear holocaust is pretty big fire could be the way it happens I can guarantee you that if terrorists get a nuclear weapon they will use it it's not like this moment right now where we're afraid of what Russia can do or we're afraid of what North Korea can do. But I can guarantee you, 100% guarantee that as soon as the terrorists have a nuclear weapon, they're not going to say, we might use this against you someday, you better be careful. They're not even going to do that. They're just going to take it somewhere and blow it up because that's what they do. They, they want to terrorize people and the best way to terrorize people is to kill them or kill enough other people that the, the other people will listen to what you have to say. So I know that when the terrorists get a nuclear weapon, they are going to use it. And the proof of that is uh, in what ISIS has done in the last few years, uh, last decade or so. Um, you say, well, they aren't going to want, they're not going to use a nuclear weapon because they don't want to have their own people be killed. And ISIS has proven that they don't care about their own people either. They've killed uh, tens of thousands of Christians in that area of the world, but they've killed 100,000 Muslims. They've killed their own people in the process of trying to kill off all the Christians. They don't care whether they're Christians or Muslims or whatever. They're just killing for the sake of terrorizing people and trying to get them to do what they want. So they don't care. They're, it's not like us. The reason why we would be really apprehensive about shooting missiles at Russia or them at us is that we know that it would come back on them. They don't, the Muslim, these terrorists don't care. They'll kill, a, they'll kill their own people. They don't care. So that's why I know they're going to use it. And uh, Iran is one of the countries that's working very hard on trying to produce uh, nuclear weapons. Um, we have an agreement with them that they're not going to do that. So we can trust them. The people that continued, their leaders say, death to America. Uh, how they want to destroy us and wipe us off the planet. We know that they wouldn't do that, right? Right? We can trust them because they signed a paper, right? Okay, so here's the point I'm trying to make. Here, you want to go ahead and throw that uh, next slide up there? We have a man saying the end is near and he's got holding a Bible and then the other one is a scientist and he's holding science but they're both saying the same thing okay and it says science and religion finally agree on something and this is what they agree on that the planet is coming to an end and we're they're both warning us about this 
So what should we do? And here's what the Bible says in this passage of Scripture. Because the end is near, we know it's coming. It could be a billion years, but it could also be 15 minutes or less if somebody pushes a button uh, or if something comes and hits us. Uh, because of this, the Bible here tells us we should be busy doing something. And so let's look today at this passage of Scripture where it says the end is near. What is it we're supposed to be doing? So first of all, he says, Therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. First thing he says is we need to be alert and sober. We shouldn't be off getting drunk and getting high and, or just getting off and to whatever state we're in. He says, keep your minds sober. Keep, keep your minds focused here because we need to be praying. First thing we need to do is make sure that we're praying. There's a lot of work to be done. So we have to be talking to God. We have to communicate with him so that we can listen to him and hear what he has to say and so that he can work through us. This is really important. Pray. The second thing he says is to love each other deeply. Um, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. And I looked that up because uh, I was kind of interested in that word covers. What does it mean that love covers sins? And as I looked it up, it, it's uh, really the word hidden, hides. In covering up over sins, it, it hides our sins. In other words, when we love each other, People are a lot more forgiving of us. They're more likely to forgive us of our sins and, and not care as much about mistakes that we make. They're more concerned about what they're receiving in love from us. And so when we love each other, it is not as important. I want to be careful I say this. We all make mistakes, right? We all, we all mess up. We say things that, that we do, should not say. And because of that, uh, we, or we do things that we should not do. Because of that, it's, we're not as effective in reaching people for Christ. Because they watch what we say and what we do. I had someone this week talk to me because uh, they were really offended at something I said back in the election days. I posted something on Facebook and they didn't agree with what I said or how I said it, they didn't think it was uh, very nice, what I said. I don't even remember what I said. That was six months ago or a year ago, I don't know. And, but you know what? It happens. And as pastor, I make mistakes too. Okay? And I know that I make mistakes. And so I need to make up, if I'm going to help people find out about Jesus, I have to be able to make up for my mistakes because they're going to happen by me and I have to do something about it. And the Bible says you can make up for the mistakes that are going to happen by loving people deeply. And they're going to be a lot more forgiving of you. Yeah, I am. Thank you for pointing that out, Vance. I appreciate that. Um, next one. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. In other words, we should be reaching out to help people and taking them into our house, taking them into our lives, offering them hospitality, and not only doing it, but also doing it without complaining. And sometimes I offer hospitality, but I complain about it. It's like, oh yeah, sure, you can come over. It's not like I had anything else better to do today. So, yeah, sometimes I take them in, but then uh, it's like, well, I really wish I didn't have to today. And then after they leave and the house is a mess, it's like, yeah, they could have stayed and cleaned up or did some laundry for me or washed the dishes or something. I don't know. I, I'm one that, I'm not the best at hospitality. I think my wife is the best at hospitality. But um, I do complain about it. 
sometimes. And it says, you know what, when you, you complain about it, then you really are defeating the purpose. What's the purpose of offering hospitality? It is, yeah, it's, it's to help people feel loved and welcome and make them feel at home with you and loved. Yeah, that's all part of it. And if you're complaining while you're doing it, then they aren't going to get that point. <laughs> so you have to do it without complaining. The next one it says that we need to do is to use your spiritual gifts to serve others. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. So God has given us spiritual gifts. He's given us things that we can use to help other people. And we can choose to use those for ourselves or we can use them to help other people. And if you've got a lovely singing voice, uh, you can use it to uh, share with people like uh, our praise team did this morning. It was lovely, uh, the things that they were sharing. Uh, Katerina is going to be sharing a song with us today uh, in closing, and she says she hates me because this song is really hard, and it's, and it's hard for her to sing and play. But she's going to do it anyway, and we're not even going to pay her. She's probably got a lovely enough voice to be on some American Idol or something else, but instead of doing it for money, she's doing it just out of the love of her heart, which is awesome. You can use your spiritual gifts to help other people, or you can use them for your own glory or money or selfishness. And it's the choice is you. God has given everybody talents and gifts and abilities, and uh, we can choose to use them to help other people or we can use them just for ourselves. And most of the world is using them for themselves, right? But that's not what God is saying. He's saying you should use it to serve other people. Be faithful, next one is be faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So God has given us grace. We have received God's grace and mercy. He has forgiven us of our sins and wipe the slate clean for us and in as God is asking us now he says because I've done this for you your proper response should be to do this for other people because you've received grace you should give grace to other people because you've received mercy you should give mercy to other people and this is how we should treat each other next one is to speak the words of God if anyone speaks they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. And as I was sharing with you before about that Facebook thing, I was speaking, but was what was I speaking? Was I speaking the words of God as I'm getting into politics and sharing all this, my thoughts on all this, and it's offending people? Were those God's words that was offending people? Now, if I speak the words of God and it offends people, then that's one thing. But I was speaking for myself and my own beliefs and my own thoughts. I wasn't speaking for God. And so what it says here, if, if you're speaking, you should be careful to speak the words of God to people. And that's what I should be doing. I shouldn't be wasting my time speaking things that are going to offend people and get people upset. I should be speaking what God wants me to say. And so that's, uh, that's the next thing. The next one is to serve with God's strength. It says, if anyone serves, they should do with the strength God provides. So we should keep serving. One of the problems with serving people is it's tiring. Anybody that, that spent this week in VBS and spent the whole week with all these kids, or anybody that goes to camp this next week with junior high, I can tell you that by the end of the week they're going to be tired. It's going to wear you out. because I, I know, because it wears me out. And I get tired, and I just want to sit and rest. And sometimes you want to, you, if we're going to serve people, or we'll continue to serve people, when you come back from senior high camp, and then you go to VBS, and then you go to junior high camp, and then you just go from one thing to the next, it's really hard to keep serving people without getting some extra strength thrown in there. And where do we get our strength from? It says, with the strength God provides. 
So we can keep serving as long as God keeps giving us strength. And sometimes that means rest. Sometimes that means we've got to take a power nap. Sometimes it means that we just need to pray and say, God, I'm getting tired right now. I'm just not feeling like I can give another hour or two of BBS today or camp today. Or I'm not feeling like I can cook this food as Erlene and some of the people are doing right now. I assume that we have food going out there. Uh, Joe Figueroa is cooking up some hamburgers and hot dogs for us. and It gets tiring, right? So sometimes we just got to pray for that a little extra strength. And the next one is to offer praise to God. So it says that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. So in the end, it says we need to do all of this and we still need to be praising God and giving God the glory for everything. Now, here's, here's this list that we've gone through today of all these different things that the Bible says, because the end is near, you should be doing all of these things. What is the point of doing all of these things? What is the goal? that we have in doing all of this. Being, bring more people to Jesus. There's, we raised, uh, or in the process of raising probably twenty to $25,000 this year to send kids to camp. You, you heard that we have 30 one kids that are signed up for junior high camp today. We had 63 senior hires go to camp. That's 94 kids, plus the counselors. With the counselors, it was well over 100 people that we're sending to camp this year. $369. Now, a lot of the parents are paying for their own way, but not that many. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of kids that need help. Uh, or they would be able to go. And it's most of the churches will say to these kids, uh, if you can come up with $369 and get it to us within a certain period of time and have everything filled out, then we'll take you to camp with us. But our church doesn't do that that way. Our church says, if you can come to camp and you want to go, we'll take you to camp. And we will do it as late as we possibly can. We'll fill out the papers on the spot as you're getting ready to go. Your parents can sign in the parking lot. And we've had parents that sign the papers in the parking lot. We will do whatever it takes to get you to camp. We put a lot of effort into our VBS this year. We spent a lot of time uh, getting as many kids as possible, and you heard that we had uh, over 75 children at VBS this year. But that's, our church doesn't have 75 kids. Do you understand that? You didn't see 75 kids up here today, did you? We have to work really hard to reach outside our doors to find 75 kids to come into our vacation Bible school. They aren't here in the church. We have to work really hard to get uh, 94 kids to go to camp because they're not here in the church. We have to reach outside our doors to do that. And it's a lot of effort. I was driving around every day picking up seven, eight, nine kids in my car, and they don't fit in one trip. So I had to make two trips. I'd have to take, go out with my car and pick up some kids, and then I'd have to drop them off at the church, and I'd have to take another trip and go out and pick up some more. And so I was making two trips every day to pick up kids to go to vacation Bible school. And I'm, I know other people were doing this too, trying to pick up, trying to get everybody as possible that was here. Uh, we only charge $7 for our VBS, which is the same price we've been charging for 20 years or so. How long? <laughs> we haven't raised the price in 20 years. Is there anything else that hasn't gone up in 20 years? Um, the reason why, 
because it doesn't pay for your kids. I hope you realize that. It doesn't actually pay the whole price of your kids coming to VBS. It costs us more than that. But we don't want to raise the price because we don't want it to be something that will keep anybody from coming to VBS. So why is it that we do all of this? Why is, why is it that we are raising $20,000 $25,000 for camp? Uh, where does even that money come from? The church doesn't have it. We're working to keep up with our bills as it is. Do you know where that money actually comes from? Some of it comes through fundraising. Some of it comes through the budget. Some of it comes through other things. But most of the money, the, the bulk of the money comes from you. <laughs> You guys are the ones that put the money in the envelopes that raises most of the money for us to send kids to camp. We had a lot of large gifts this year, which is great. Uh, just from several in individuals that were giving $1,000 checks or $2,000 checks or $5,000 checks, it was great. But still, it wasn't even that wasn't even half the money. The rest of it comes from you guys, putting $10 a week in or $10 a month or whatever it is, whatever comes in those envelopes that, that we fill up. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Now, if, if you're here today and you just brought your kids because this is a VBS day and we have the picnic and we have the jumper out here, you might be asking, why does this church care so much about my kids coming to VBS? Or why do they care so much about my kids coming to go to camp with us today? And that's a legitimate question. If I was you, this is what I would be doing. I'd be asking what your angle is here. What is it that you're after from me? We have that slide up. No, the one, the picture one. There we go. It says, the end is near. Yes, but what are your goals? What is it? Yeah, the end is near, but what is it that you're really after? What is it that you're trying to get out of me? Well, I can finally tell you that we have some timeshares that we would like to sell you <laughs> that are... You're going, yeah, I knew it. I knew there was... I knew Don't you hate those phone calls that you get? That you're going to have to sell our house. <laughs> yes, well, that's, that happens. Uh, I get these phone calls, and they're... I used to show up at those things, because they give you some free gift, right? You get to go on this trip or whatever. Yeah. And so I said, oh, yeah, I can listen to some timeshare thing for 15 minutes, and then it ends up being an hour or two hours, and, and they harass you to death until you finally break down or you get mad and walk away, go to them anymore. We don't have any timeshares to sell you today. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The reason why we do all of this is because the end is near and God has said, I want you to bring as many people with you to heaven as you can. That's the one and only reason why we do what we do here. We, God has given us his grace and mercy. He said, I, my son Jesus has come and died for you. All you got to do is accept Jesus as your Savior. And you can come and join me in heaven. And because he did that for me, and he asked me to bring as many people as I can with me to heaven... I take that seriously. I say, you know what? God, God has a right over my life because he's given me eternal life. He's promised this to me. My life is, is going to end someday, but I know that that's not the end. I'm going to get to be with him forever in heaven. And because he did that for me, he has a right to ask me anything he wants. And what he asked me 
He said, go into all the world and make disciples. Preach the gospel. Make disciples. Baptize. That's what I want you to be doing, is bringing people into the kingdom of God. Bringing people with you to Him. Look at that 20, 20 to 25 thousand dollars. We had, I don't know, what seven or eight kids that accepted Christ for the first time. At senior high camp. We'll probably have at least three or four or five accept Christ for the first time. Maybe more than that. Let's say we had ten. Spent twenty thousand dollars on ten people coming to the Lord. It's two thousand dollars a piece. A lot of money. A lot of money for somebody's soul. I heard something today. I was on, the radio came on when I was waking up and it, it was quoting C.S. Lewis. said that uh, people think that in our bodies we have a soul. And he said that's wrong. We are souls that have a body. We really are our soul. That's who we are. The body is just window dressing. That's just something that people see in the time being, but who we are is our soul. And ultimately, it's the soul that's going to be judged. And I get to heaven, and he asks me, what did you do with your money? And I say, well, I bought a lot of DVDs. And I ate a lot of Mongolian barbecue. Now I had a nice car. Nice house. You know what? He's not going to care about any of that. That's going to mean zip to God in heaven. As by the time I get there, it's going to mean zip to me too. But you know what's going to mean something to him? Those souls that are up in heaven and every nickel that I invested in their lives, every time I drove one of them to church, every time I invited them, every, every, any time I did anything, all this list of things that we're supposed to do to, to pray, to love deeply, to show hospitality, to use my gifts, to be stewards of God's grace, to speak the words of God, serving with God's strength and offering praise, this is all for this purpose of bringing people to Jesus. And every time I did, did one of those things that he asked me to do, and it was something he could use to bring someone to Jesus Christ, when we get to heaven, that's going to be noted. Duly noted. All of this other stuff that I do, even my softball games, even my, you know, all the, all the other things. Unless I did it for the right reasons. That's what I keep saying. Not to win, to share Christ. Uh, anything else that we're doing is not going to mean anything when we get to heaven, but this is going to mean something. So everything that we do in VBS, in camps, in, in our church, in sharing Christ in the, in doing what we did with, in bringing all those homeless people onto our campus and whatever that we're doing, this is the reason why we go through all this effort and put all this time and effort into this. I had someone come to me this year and say they wanted to be baptized. And I thought, well, that's great. Um, but I barely knew this person and I wondered why they were going to ask, why they were asking me to be baptized and they said to me, they said, because you're the one that led me to the Lord. And I said, when did I do that? And they said, five years ago in VBS, you asked us if we wanted to accept Christ, and I raised my hand. Don't you remember when I raised my hand in VBS five years ago? I'll be honest, I don't even remember them being there five years ago. But apparently we both were there 
and they accepted Christ. And that was why we did what we did five years ago. And that is why we did what we did this year. We, uh, we did have some kids accept Christ. Are, are my teachers here? Are they in here? Or they all take off to help with the kids? Yeah. They're off busy serving the Lord, the sons of guns. Um, anyway, I want to I wanna write the names on the, the wall, but I, we probably can't do it this morning. We have a wall here, uh, two pillars, that we've started writing names of people down that accepted Christ. And so we, we just last week had about four or five people write their names on the wall for senior high camp. And then we had, what, three more Thursday night that wrote their names on the wall. So we have at least seven new names on the wall uh, just from senior high camp. And I'd like to add the VBS names on there too. So Joy, can you help us uh, put that list together as best we can from the teachers and as many names as we can? Uh, again, this is, this is not so that we can get credit, but this is the only thing that matters. And you, you wonder, why is it that we do what we do? Why is it that we put so much effort into this? It's so that we can bring kids to Christ. And why is it that we brought all of the parents that we could here today? Guess why? <laughs> it's for you, too. <laughs> it's not just for your kids. It's for you. We want you to share with us forever and, and be with us in heaven. And you say, well, I don't even know you, and you don't know me. You're right. I don't, probably. But that doesn't matter. We'll have all of eternity to get to know each other really well. And that's what we're here for. I hope that if you are here today, and you don't know Jesus, you want to put the, the last slide up? Prepare for the end of this world. I hope that today you'll take this seriously and realize that you should be preparing for the end of this world. We don't know if it's going to be a billion years from now or whether it's going to be 15 minutes from now. But we know we got this moment right now. And we got an opportunity right now to say, today, right now, I'm, I want to get ready for the end of this world. I want to be ready right now. And if you want to be ready right now for the end of this world, that's what we're here for. We want to help you get ready for the end of this world. We want you to be ready today. If, if the bombs start fly, flying in here in 15 minutes, we want you to be ready. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. I thank you that as Christians, we aren't really too worried about the end of this world because it's just the beginning of a new world and a new life that's going to be much better than what we have here. But I do know what we're here to do. You've told us over and over again, our job is to share the good news with other people. And that's what we tried to do this morning. That's what I tried to do. That's why we have this picnic. That's why we have the, the bouncer out there. That's why we've gotten all this food together. That's why we've done everything that we've done today. We've done it for the glory of our God so that you can bring people to Jesus Christ and, and draw them into your kingdom. I hope that somehow I've gotten that across today. I hope that if there is anybody here today that doesn't have Jesus as their Savior, that today they will prepare and be ready to meet you and to stand before you at the end of this world. Please, Lord, if there is somebody that, that needs to have salvation today, I pray that they will reach out to you. I hope they'll reach out to us too, but I pray that they'll reach out to you today and, and call on your name and ask you to draw them to salvation. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.